Good morning everyone and welcome to this webinar. My name is Bjorn Skjornberg. I work as FIE here at Know How Solutions. So this is session three out of three, automation and API with Lauterbach. So, two days ago I gave you a webinar on what you need to get started. So what hardware and what software you need from Lauterbach and what you need from the target side, so to speak. And then I showed you what you can do if you have JTAG signals available uh, to your targets, what you can do with basic debug. Yesterday, I showed you what you can do with trace. So if you can trace your target, what type of performance measurement could you get? A little bit about code coverage and the reports and then also some cache analysis and context tracking system. So both of these webinars are available on YouTube on our Know How Solutions channel. So for today, today I will show you how you can integrate Lauterbach together with your continuous integration. So I will show you a little bit of what APIs are available and I will show you and give you an ID, so to say, how to how to do the test automation when you have the Lauterbach attached. Then I will show you what different types of reports you can get out of your Lauterbach, and then we will end with the Q and A. Um, so this is more give you an inspiration of how you can use um, your Lauterbach beside normal debugging and trace. So how you can get more use of your larger box, so to speak. So, the typical test. Well, usually there are four phases when you do your system or software component test. So phase number one, the init measurement. So here, you will load the correct application to your target. You perhaps need to set some variables or change some state of your target and then make your target ready to be measured. Then in phase number two, you will start the test. So your test code will be exercising your production code, and the test code will give input to your production code. As the test go along, you will measure the result of the production code, and in phase number three, you will stop the test case. Here you perhaps need to do some minor reporting, you perhaps need to change some state of the target, um, and so on. And this you will loop around for as many times as you need. Then when all the test cases are done and you're done with your system or component test, phase number four comes. So this is the teardown phase. So here you will do some post-processing you will perhaps create some final reports, do cleanup of target, perhaps close the target in a graceful way. So how, what will Lauterbach have to do in each of these phases? Well, first of all, you will use the API from your um, test application to communicate with the Lauterbach. So in phase number one, you need to open a Trace32 software and you need to connect to target. So you can have Lauterbach to load the application to your target, or if you already have your application running on your target, you can only load the symbols to the debugger uh, and then attach to the target. If necessary, you can set up some trace or breakpoints, or since we have the JTAG signals, we can change uh, variables if that is necessary. Then you will start your test case, so phase number two. So in this case, Lauterbach will start to collect trace. And your test code will exercise your production code. And you will collect the results. And then when we come to phase number three, um, Lauterbach will stop collecting trace. So Lauterbach will then save the trace buffer to your hard drive and then perhaps do some test reports for each, each test case. And then you will loop around for as many times as you need. And then in the teardown phase, phase number four, 
Lauterbach will do some final reporting if that's needed, um, some post-processing if that is needed, and then Lauterbach will be closed and the API will be closed. So, as you all know by now, trace is non-intrusive, which means that while you're tracing your target, this will not affect the test results. So adding the Lauterbach to your system or component test will not change the outcome of the test. So the typical things you can get from adding Lauterbach is performance reports. So both on function level and on RTOS task level, I will show you these two today. You can get code coverage report. So how much of my code was, was exercised. And um, so you can get both for per test case, but then you can also do a complete component code coverage reports where you combine the various um, trace buffers. I will also show you this today. You can do cache analysis. Um, if you store the trace buffer, you can reconstruct the execution of the CPU. You also need to store the ROM. So you can also take some dumps so memory, ROM, or kernel dumps, and then change the state of the CPU, and so on and so on. So all of the different measurements I showed you yesterday, this is able to get as a report. So I'm using a function in Lauterbach called winprint, which will print the report into a text file. So how does the API work? Well, first of all, Lauterbach has already pre-made APIs. So they support um, almost almost every language that you can get. So Python, C, LabVIEW, uh, etc, etc. So there is a good PDF in the demo, in the PDF folder, sorry, which is called apiremote.pdf, where you have all of the library functions described. All of the f functions that Lauterbach has developed you can read about in there. So, when we do, so to say, normal debugging and normal trace, so when you as the user sit and do use trace32, you will be in the green box. So you will give a command and the command will be sent to the trace32 hardware and then it will be executed on target. So you need to get this command into the trace32 software from your test application. So this is done by using the API. So the API will send commands over a UDP socket. So a UDP port, which is which you as a user has predefined. Then you need to set up the Trace32 software to listen to this port. So if you have multiple, if you have an AMP debug, you have many Trace32 instances then each instance will need its own port. So you will be able to communicate with all of them. Um, so you need to prepare the Trace32 software for this. And this is done in the config.t32 file. So you need to set RCL equal net assist. You need to set the pack length to 1024. And then you need to decide what port you would like to send your commands to what port uh, Trace32 should be listening on. So you need a library for this and these library come uh, pre-made. So there is one for Windows, both 32 and 64 bits and also for Linux, 32 and 64 bits. So I'm using Python today and this is how I usually structure it. So I have a function where I give the commands and then I specify the port and then I'm using the Lauterbach function t32cmd which will give me access to the command line in trace32 and then I can do um, more or less what I want to. So for today's demo, so I will demo my test framework. So this is a component test that consists of three different test cases. My test application is a Python script and this demo which I'm showing today can be used 
either with GUI, so I will use it with GUI for the demo purposes, but when I use it together with Jenkins, I will use it without GUI because the GUI is not needed for this. Um, so the main idea for this script is that you can put this in as a Jenkins job that could be executed in the middle of the night, so to speak, and then you will have the reports from your test in the morning and you can go over and see what went good and what went wrong. So the main idea with the script is that it should do everything for me. Um, I should not have to even to be present um, at the computer. So it will init and set up my target. It will do the test and then do the reports and then export my reports to my continuous integration system um, wherever that might be. So just an overview of how uh, I have structured it. So I have a Python script, run test cases.py. So phase number one is this two. So I have a shell script that is starting trace32 and configure it for the correct UDP port. Then I will call a loudrobot script which will in initialize the target, load the application and then put the target in a correct state uh, for me. Then in phase two number three, which is starting and stopping of each test case, uh, I have Lauterbach uh, scripts doing this for me. So it's setting breakpoints, collecting the trace and start and stop of test. And once the test is stopped, it will do performance report, it will store the trace data and it will do a code coverage report for each test. And this is done three times. And then in phase number four, I will do the I will do a Lauterbach script, which will do a final report. So this script will combine the trace buffers from from the three test cases and make one big code coverage report. So this is the details of my test script. So what I want to highlight here is that I'm using Lauterbach to drive my test code. Um, what do I mean by this? Well, I've done it quite simply. So I've put all of the function which I wish to test, I put them in a giant switch case. So Lauterbach is responsible to set breakpoints at where the switch begin and where the test case ends. And then also Lauterbach handles the value of SW. So this can, for me, this is quite practical or but if you already have your system or component software test this is not how you would do it so but for make it easy for myself I have done like this so today's um, target I'm using a little bit different one today uh, I'm using a Cortex M4 so I'm running an Artos which is called RTX which comes from ARM so I have the embedded trace macro cell which is providing me with instruction trace. So yesterday I have the PTM, the program trace macro cell, which was also providing me with instruction trace. So the outcome will be the same. And I'm using a Lauterbach micro trace, um, which is a special device from Lauterbach that can only be used with Cortex, Cortex M devices. So for any technical questions, please contact me or for any sales questions, please contact one of my coworkers. So let me put up the right windows. So this is my SIGWIN. Um, so this demo, this kind of collecting trace and doing reports is possible for all different architectures. Uh, you need trace, of course, but it doesn't matter if it's ARM Cortex M or PowerPC uh, or a DSP. The the ID is uh, is the same and it will work. Okay, so I will start my script. So this will open Lauterbach for me in the wrong screen, and then it will load the application for me. It 
will start test case number zero. And then it will save the trace data, do performance reports for function level and performance report on task level. Um, and a code coverage report as well. Then we do test case number one, do the same reports for test case number one. And then the same for test case number five. So now we'll tear down my measurements. So I will do a combined code coverage report with all of the three trace buffers. And then I will exit trace32 and close the UDP port. Okay, so there we go, nice and easy. So what do I get from this? Well, I've stored my reports in these three folders. So if we have a look at test number zero, you see here I have a performance for function, so test case number zero. And this is giving me total time for each function, minimum, maximum, and average time. Um, perhaps it would be a little bit hard to look at um, because it's always easier to look at your own your own target with your own function which you have written. So, um, but I get a, to get the essence of it, I get a quite good overview of where the CPU has spent most of its time. I get the same type of measurement for the um, task, so on task level I get where I've been. I also like to do when I do this test, I do a little log file which is telling me when the test started and when the test stopped and then how many trace packages that has been collected. And then of course I do the code coverage report. So the code coverage report will show me what instruction has been executed and what instructions has not been executed. So I have a total of 49% for the whole address range and if we have a look at a function, uh, let's say here, so we see for each line how much code coverage we have and then we see which instruction that has been executed and which has never been executed. So the reports now is in XML, so I need a XSL file to open this XML report. Um, so you don't need Trace32 installed on your, on your host to view this report. So I get the same report for test case number one, so I have 59% um, of code coverage and I have a little bit different coverage here. I get the same performance, so which functions has been executed during test number one and which task ha has been run during um, test case number one. And then, of course, I get the same for um, test case number five. And then I'm doing a final code coverage report. So the final code coverage report, I have added the trace buffer for test case number zero, test case number one, and test case number five. So you see here, I have a little bit better uh, code coverage in total. Um, like this. So it's possible to I mean export them in wherever you want and you can also if you do not wish to have this as text you can get them as PDF as well. Um, so this was it for this webinar. Um, so as I said this, can, this should be done from a Jenkins job so you should not even have to have to start the script that do the measurement for you and it will work with every single architecture. The only thing you need is instruction trace to get this performance and the code coverage reports.